I'm Jenny. And it's time to talk about tracking. No, not like that. Now, before I get started, I want to call out to last week's video. If you enjoyed it, go check out Mouth Sounds and Mouth Silence, two other albums by this guy, because the rabbit hole there is deep. In particular, Mouth Sounds is a whole bunch of Smash Mouth mashups. Say that 10 times really fast. Mouth Silence is a bunch of mashups that don't have any Smash Mouth, or so you're told. There's actually a lot of hidden Easter eggs and callbacks and references to Smash Mouth. And there's a video that I'll link down the doobly-doo, but see if you can find them yourself. It's super fun. Okay, so tracking. Originally, I was going to do this video all about Hexaw. 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 Now, this is an online label. They put out releases strictly around music that's been created with this program. Little GP Tracker. Little Piggy. It's this crazy open source label linked down the doobly-doo. Everything's under a Creative Commons license. And I quote, all works on this page are protected from you by Creative Commons. And it's more like an amalgamation of maniacs than it is a record label. It's really cool. This is another rabbit hole that is super interesting. My favorite compilation from this label so far is Jazz Hole. I mean, this is music that's made on a tracker that exists on things like NESs and Game Boy Advances. This is not ultra produced stuff here. This ain't coming out of no Ableton. But Johnny... You might be asking yourself, what the hell is a tracker anyways? So back in the day, if you wanted to make music on computers, you used to have like sheet music programs that would try to play sounds that vaguely resembled symphonic instruments and it was awful. And you had trackers. And the first tracker ever built was in 1987 for the Amiga computer. Shout out to RJ. I miss the Amiga, but I miss you more. It was really making music by numbers. You would figure out which note you wanted, then you would give it an instrument number and you would load that instrument in that slot and then maybe have some more numbers that would control things like volume or even pitch and its position would be referenced numerically. Like you wouldn't have a quarter note position necessarily or even a quarter note. You would just have a sound that would start at position zero and end at position eight. It was a really computer guy way to make music. This started because of the demo scene. So if you don't know, a demo is a way for a hacker to really show off his skills. He is going to write pure assembly and bang bits on chips to show you, look how much cool stuff I can do with this machine that shouldn't be able to do that. And music trackers allowed you to get a lot of really good, at the time, music in a really small space, which was important. You only had maybe 500K to play with. And this is a style of music production that I miss. When I was much younger, we used to have to sequence our drums using numbers and we liked it. When I was young, I used a tracker called Octomed and it was cool because it could play eight sounds at once instead of just four. As I got older and started to really want to get into this music thing, I really started playing with Octomed. Eventually, I got a MIDI interface and started plugging that into keyboards, and things started to really explode for me. I spent many a long night with my roommate, Corey, messing around with trackers. I met this guy, Paul Borland, rest in peace, motherfucker, who hooked me up with this thing called Octomed Sound Studio. It was the cat's pajamas. So it had this thing called an A-Rex port. You could script two different programs together into one uber program of joy. And if you know anything about the kind of videos I've made in the past, you can imagine how much I loved this. And it was cool being able to script little tasks and hook in other programs. And it's something that I still miss to this day. There isn't something that has the same scriptability and connection to other programs. I used Octomed Sound Studio for a real long time. And in fact, my hardware sequencer of choice for many, many years still had a lot of that tracking methodology behind it. Its little interface seemed to draw a lot from trackers, not so much from standard musical notation. And the RM1X is still known as a hardware sequencer workhorse. So the entire hardcore techno scene was basically built on trackers. And some real big acts even use trackers. Guys like Darude, you know, that infected mushroom and even dead mouth five and if you follow my facebook page 
I posted a link to this video of Urban Shakedown and this old school jungle track all done in, you guessed it, Octomed. It's freaking awesome. Links down below. All right. Have you got any experience with trackers or is there any sequencer out there that has affected you or is so much different than your usual crop of sequencers today? And until next time, painting music with numbers is fun.